Here we go with the video on the power supply and we're going to figure out what we do with all these wires here. Now this is a power supply from an old Dell computer. It's a 200 watt and it looks like it's never been used because it's nice and shiny. And so let's figure out what we're going to do with this thing right now. I'm Tom Kovichak and this is Tom's Trains and Things. This channel was created to help other modelers who are in need of guidance in pursuing their dream of building a model railroad. And we're going to need a power supply for running our components underneath our layout, like our switch machines and lights and a lot of other things. So here's a good thing. If you got an old computer laying around that uh, you don't know what to do with, you could pull the power supply out of that and you could use that for power to run anything that you have under there. You got 3.3 volts, you got 5 volts, you got 12 volts, you got minus 12 volts, and if you have a white wire on there, you got minus 5 volts also. So let's see what we got here. If you like what I'm doing here and you would like to support this channel, go on over to my Patreon page and see what's going on over there and help support this channel. Thank you. Okay, right here I have two power supplies. The one on the top is a 200 watt one and it came from Dell and I got this at a uh, thrift store and from what it looks like it's never been used. Now the one underneath it I just took out of my old XP computer that died. Uh, it still had power but I still have all the connectors on it and you can see that this has the 20, 20 pin connector on, on it and it has all the... Uh, peripheral connectors on there also and you can see on this one it has an additional white wire on there which is a minus 5 volt and there is a brown wire connected to the orange wire the 3.3 volt wire you can see that they're both the same size they look identical they fit in the same computer but one is just more wattage than the other and the only difference in other than the wattage is the wires on it. it. This one here from the XP computer has additional voltages for the computer. After doing a little bit more research on the power supplies and when they were made, I found out that what I said before on what Vinny did with his switch using a just using a regular toggle switch on there keeping it energized all the time he was correct on the power supply that he was using there are power supplies that you could do that with there there are also power supplies where you have momentary contacts they also need a resistor on it this is a 5 watt 5 ohm resistor now i put these put this across the black and one of the red plus 5 volt um, wires. Now, I ran it with the resistor in place and without the resistor in place. Now, with the resistor in place, I had a more accurate, I had right at 5 volts. With the, without the resistor in place, it was more like 4.7, 4.6. It didn't quite get up to that 5 volts yet. So, uh, and, and that was on both power supplies that I tested it and even with the 12 volt even with this on the 5 volt across the 5 volt testing the 12 volt line uh, there was still a difference in the voltage reading so you do need this resistor in there to have a more accurate and more stable voltage in there and I'm going to show you how to do that in a few minutes so let's get going with that right down here now you could use this on your bench or you could use this on your on your layout. So I'm not going to show you a specific way to hook it up on the layout or on the bench. I'm just going to show you a generic way to get this thing started use and using some terminal strips. And we're going to need the 5 ohm 5 watt resistor. We're going to need a switch to turn it on, and we're going to use a little LED, and I'm going to show it to you on one of these little boards right here how to do that with. I removed the top so you could see the insides and see where the wires are coming from on here. 
and as you can see all the all the ground wires all the black wires are here are coming from the same uh, same terminal although you have four different soldering points on here and on the on the plus five on the red you have different soldering points on here also they're all common they're all tied together on the other side the same way with the 12 volt and the 3.3 volt the first part we're going to work on is the control circuit now we're going to separate uh, three of the black wires and we're going to take one red wire one green wire and one gray wire the red wire is going to go to the resistor the green wire is going to go to the switch and the gray wire is going to go to our indicator light our little LED so that's what we're going to work on so what I did was I attached my resistor and it's remember it's a 5 ohm 5 watt resistor and I I mounted it on the top of the power supply and the reason I did that is so the metal from the power supply can dissipate some of the heat because this gets pretty hot now the green and the black wire that's going to go to a single pole single throw switch it's just a plain on and off switch and then this gray and black wire that is just to show that we have uh, power going to it. it's just an indicator light and I'll take some of the stuff off of here but it's basically just an LED with a resistor just to show you that you have power going to the uh, power supply. I'm going to crimp these uh, red spade terminals to the uh, black and the green wire for the switch. Now I already stripped them off. Okay. Now there's various types of crimping tools. This is one I have. Okay. And what I do is I make sure that the wire comes all the way through to the end. I don't know if you can see it there. squeeze down on it real tight and then make sure it doesn't come out and I do the same thing with the black wire and you'll notice what I'm doing on this right here there's a tab on this one now all of them are made different and then there's a slot on this side I put the tab on the opposite side so it presses down and gives it a uh, notch on the opposite side of where the the uh, the separation is it I guess it makes it a little bit stronger that way that's the way I've always done it put this up in here make sure it's coming through good and tight and see you got the notch on that side and this is the side that the, the crease is on so we're just going to take it and put it on the switch now it would have been nicer if these spades were just a little bit smaller but that's all right they'll still fit you could splice wires on it and put this anywhere you could put this on a panel. You could even mount this on the inside. Now what I did here is I took the black and the gray wire, put it on the terminal board, and then used these little jumper wires here for on my little test board. And I have my switch right here, and I turned it on. I don't know if you, can you see that? Okay, yeah, you can see that. All right. So that gives you the indication that the power supply is on and it is working okay now we're going to go to the good stuff we're going to uh, put some uh, spade terminals on 
all these other wires here. Now, the uh, purple and the blue wire. If you want 24 volts on here, you can use the, the yellow and the blue wire to get your 24 volts. This is plus 12, this is minus 12. And the blue wire, the minus 12, you can, let me see what it says on here for the minus 12. It'll be different on all the power supplies. It's one amp on here. So you have, so between the two, you'll have one amp of, of uh, current for 24 volts or any combination that you use with the minus 12 and any positive one, say like if you use a plus 3.3 and a um, plus 5. You do the math. This one here is the plus five, and this is on all the time. So you got 5.153 volts on there. So see, it's on all the time. You could keep that or you could disconnect it. It doesn't matter. Uh, it depends on what you want to use this power supply for. If you want to have something that you have power to all the time, then you can use it. What we're going to do here is to maximize the amperage on it and to be able to put them into the yellow uh, spade terminals. Uh, this is good for number 12 gauge wire, but I am not sure how many uh, 20 gauge wires will fit in there. Now, I don't think six of them will fit in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate each uh, voltage into three wires and put them like this. I'm going to put three wires into each spade terminal. And I'm going to do the same thing with the black wires. Let me see how many we got here. One, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I'm I'm going to try to put four of them in there and do just three. Let me just go through one of them uh, before I put the uh, spade terminals on there so you can see when, when you're doing multiple wires. I cut all the insulation back about the same and I'm going to twist them just a little bit just so they're all together and we're going to put it in there like that. And it looks like I I would have a lot more room than just the three, but I'm just going to stick with the three and do two sets of threes on there. But that uh, I just wanted to show you how I started that. I have all the wire stripped and we're ready to go. So we got the 3.3, we got the 5 volt standby, we got the 5 volt, we got the minus 12, we got the plus 12, and we got all the ground wires over here. Now here's our switch and my light is over here off camera right now. That's just our test light. Turn it on. We got our green light there. So we got 3.43 we got 5.15, we got 5.01, we got minus 11.59, and we got 11.87. You could arrange your strip any way you want. I just did mine from low voltage to high. I went 3.3 to 5 standby to 5 to minus 12 to 12 and then the ground wires right here so now and then we got our switch here you could mount this in a panel and like I said before you could mount it inside if you're going to use this on a workbench you could also mount an LED inside here you know coming out with a little holder I just have it on the little uh, board right now just to show give you the indication of it Oh, by the way, the resistor that I used is a 5 ohm, 5 watt resistor. They come 5 in a pack and they're a whopping $1.69 for 5. And also, you could use any LED and this is a 220 ohm 
resistor. You have to have a resistor hooked up to your LED on the long side of it. Okay, so you just have to remember that, otherwise you're going to burn out your LED. And the spade terminals, you could pick them up anywhere. Same thing with the terminal board and switch. And what else did I have on here? Oh yeah, and a little little wire ties too, you, you know, cable ties. I probably could have got away using the blue ones uh, with three wires, uh, but just to be on the safe side, I got the yellow ones. So that's everything that I used on there. Now this looks a little better than what we saw at the beginning of this video. Now, okay, now, like I said before, you could do this on your layout or you could do this on your workbench. And I just, the way that I showed you is just a generic way. Uh, you could mount your switches, you could mount your resistors, you can mount your terminal board anywhere that you want to, depending on how you're going to use this. So go from there. This is just a starting point for using your power supply. So if you'd like to see more videos like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, ding that bell. And that'll notify you whenever I have another video coming out. And while you're at it, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. I like to read your comments and your comments are going in the Q's and A's. I got a couple more Q and A's coming up, so look for them. And don't forget this coming week, uh, my family's gonna be down here, so I'm gonna be having fun at the, at the pool and at the, where else, at the beach and eating good. And we got squeaky here.